Hello, welcome to High School Physics. Today we're going to be looking at potentiometers or potential dividers. We're going to see how they work, where they're used, and then we are going to put them in a circuit with an LDR, a light dependent resistor, and a thermistor, which is a temperature dependent resistor. Good. Okay, rear stats is our starting point, and we're going to stay on this screen just for a while because I've already got here a rear stat wired in to show you. Now, hopefully you would have used these previously, okay? And we connect them in at the top, and it comes in at the bottom, okay? It comes out of the bottom, in at the top, out of the bottom there. As we move the slider along the top, the resistance changes, okay? It's a resistor and we can get its resistance to vary, okay? We can go right down here, pretty close to zero. There it is. Okay, so that's our variable resistor. Now, some of you guys would have thought, well, why has it got three connections? Why have we got this connection here? Yeah, well, the reason is, is that we wire it in as a potentiometer. Yeah, so rear stats, nice and easy to use. That's a simple way of using them. But when we want something a little bit better, a lot better in some cases, then we use all three connections. So pay attention. Right, let's get rid of this little beauty here and get back to what we're doing. So we've got our variable resistor and there's our very simple circuit with it in. There it is. Now, what happens is, you guys know this already, hopefully, but as a quick recap, as we move the slider along, it changes the resistance here and that will change the voltage across the lamp, okay? Now, imagine, imagine we've got a lamp which is 10 ohms. And imagine, and that, that's a bit of a lie guys, because it will change according to the, the amount of current, but approximately 10. And imagine if our rear stat was 10 ohms, okay? If we put this to the maximum resistance of 10 ohms, and this was 10 ohms, it's a series circuit, the voltage divides, Okay, so this would have two volts here and two volts there. If that was the maximum, we couldn't get this any lower than two volts. Okay, so if this goes to a minimum, if that goes to zero, yes, we can deliver our four volts here. That's not a problem. So if we move this to zero, we can get our maximum. Okay, now if we had a different one here, just say we change that to 90 ohms, and the one we saw was about 80. So 90 is an un, um, unrealistic. If this went up to 90 ohms, then nine tenths of the voltage would be dropped across here, and one tenth would be dropped across here. Okay, so this would now go to, if I get rid of these two, that would be zero. 0.4 of a volt here, and this would be 3.6, okay? So the ratio of the voltage depends upon the ratio of the resistances. When we max this out, we still can't get to zero, and this is a limitation. This causes problems with some circuits, okay? So yeah, they're fine, but what's better is when we use that third connection which I showed you on the device. Now, before we're gonna go ahead and wire that in, here's our little bit of thinking behind this. All right, if we've got four volts there, we've got four equal resistors. Yep, that's right. We're gonna get one volt across each, aren't we? Yeah. So if I was to connect the, the voltmeter here, if I was to connect it there, all right, at that point, it would read one volt. volt. If I connected it there, the voltmeter would read two volts three volts and four volts, okay? So we can move this connection around and depending where we move it to, because it's in parallel with this, we could have, we could move it from here. It would start at zero volts, that's important. So at point A, it would be at zero point, at zero volts, at B, there, it would be one volt, C, 
T A four three two. Depending where we put it, we could go from a zero right up to the maximum. Okay, we can never get to zero with this one. Here we can go to zero. Okay, so with that little bit of knowledge stuck in your brain, let's look at this. Instead of using resistors, what if we used a wire? Well, if we had a voltmeter here and we had a wire that we could slide a little connection along, we could go from here, which will give us zero volts, up to the maximum here at four volts and anything in between. Right? Well, our rear stat, this is a wire. This, guys, is our wire. It's just all coiled up for convenience. There's our slider. Okay, so look, look what we've got here. We've got the wire, which are these two connections there. And we could put our voltmeter in here and it slides along. And this is the sliding part here. So we can use this to go from zero volts right up to four volts. This can't go to zero. This can. This is like your dimmer switch in your house, right? We need a dimmer switch so we can get right down to zero. Okay. And the other thing is this, guys. Every time you're putting in more resistance here, as the resistance goes up, the current is going down. So this, okay, we might put a massive brake resistor in here, but then we've hardly got any current. So this is going to cause problems, all right? This one here, we can just have this part of the circuit, because it's in parallel, working independently. So if this is a lamp, this part can work independently because it's a parallel circuit. This part is in parallel, all right? So with all that going on, let's have a look at what we're going to do. Yeah, we're going to wire this up in a side view, right? And this becomes apparent later because when we go on to another topic of gates, we tend to use side views. So look, if we had our battery here and then had a, a wire going along here and a wire going along there, we could add different components into our circuit, okay? So, there are some circuits where we need to monitor the voltage. And so what we need to do is we need to have two devices side by side so we can change the voltage. So what we do, guys, is we want to have a voltage coming out here that we can modify. OK, so what we have is this side here is a resistor and this side here, for argument's sake, is a thermistor. OK. So this is going to monitor temperature. Right. This will go to us another circuit, right, which will give us an indication to what's happening with temperature. So this could be a thermostat in a room, and this might want to go to another circuit to switch on the central heating. OK, so what we need to do is we need to divide the potential between this top part of the circuit and this part of the circuit. Now. Um, I'm going to call that one R because it's a resistor, and I'm going to call that one T. We've got five volts. If R is equal to T, then they use 2.5 volts each, which means the voltage at X is going to be equal to 2.5 volts because we've got five volts dropped across the circuit. If these have the same resistance, half the volts are dropped here, and half the volts there. That leaves us two and a half volts. Okay, right. How about this? What if R was equal to nine ohms and T was equal to one ohm? Well, nine tenths of the voltage is dropped here and one tenth of the voltage is dropped here. So what happens is the volt drop across here is four. 0.5 volts. That's the volt drop, which only leaves across this one 0 0.5 volts. Across here is 0 0.5. So what happens is in this situation, the voltage at X is now this 0 
the voltage at X equals 0 0.5 volts because it's a series circuit. Ignore the rest of that. This is a series circuit. And the more the, more the resistance, the greater the resistance, the greater the volt drop across it. Same current going through. Same current going through it, guys. It's series circuit. So most of the volts are dropped here. And there's a little bit left there. And so this is basically almost at a zero. OK, so that's going to drive a different part of the circuit over here. I'm going to come on to that later. All right. So if we change the parameters on here, OK, if we move this around, we otherwise can have a variable resistor here to help us tune the circuit, or we can change the temperature of this. So when we change the temperature of this, as it's a thermistor, if the resistance of T now goes up, if the resistance of T goes up, and we'll just say that R stays the same. So if we say that R is equal to nine, okay, then if we increase this one, the thermistor, so its resistance goes up to, I don't know, we're going to do an approximation. So let's say it goes up to 91. Okay. The ratio is approximately nine to one. The ratio of these resistances is nine to one. So the voltages are in a ratio of nine to one. So now one tenth of the voltage is dropped here. So now across R, the voltage goes down by 0 0.5 of a volt. Okay. And at T, the voltage will go down by 4.5 volts, which means at X, the voltage equals 4.5 volts. So when T changes, which it will do, because it's got, it's a thermistor and it's built to change its resistance with temperature. Okay. As its resistance changes, the volt drop changes. So what happens is as the resistance of T goes up, more volts are dropped across it because it's dropped in that ratio. Yeah. So now what we've done is we've changed the output. X has an output of 4.5 volts. Previously, it had an output of almost zero. This high voltage can drive a separate circuit over here or another part of the circuit to switch on the air conditioning. And that's our potential divider, guys. That is how it works. And if we had a light sensitive switch, we could replace this with a light dependent resistor. OK, so it's all to do with the ratio of the resistances will be equal to the ratio of the voltages. OK. That is it. All right, little approximation here, but that's all that's happening. And then this change in voltage is used to drive another part of the circuit. OK, so what we end up with is this. We end up with our um, two devices here. All right. There's our thermistor. There's our resistor here. This is our potential divider circuit. Potential divider. Potential is voltage. It's been divided. It's been shared. It goes through a separate piece of circuitry here, which often contains something called a gate. And we're going to come on to that later. OK, it's actually a, it's a bit like a switch. OK. What is a gate? Well, it, it does a similar job to a switch. All right. So, and then what we do is this, guys. When we want our separate big circuit runs off the mains, 240 volts, it's got to drive a big motor to drive the central heating. Okay. Five volts cannot drive your central heating. 240 volts will fry the electronics. Okay. So, what we've got to do is we've got to make an interface between the two circuits. And this is called a read relay. It's a little coil. Okay, it's a little coil of wire with two fine pieces of metal next to it. When this becomes a magnet, D 
these join together. And when they, they literally spring up, spring open and spring together. Okay. When this becomes a magnet, this springs together and it switches on the motor. Okay. So depending on the signal, which goes through the gate, depending how we make it switch, this read relay will switch on. A read guys, some of you play musical instruments. If you've got a saxophone or an oboe, then that little piece of bamboo inside it is called a reed. Well, we use the same word in physics for little bits of metal. Two little metal contacts, doink, and they join together. Okay? That little switch can drive this separate motor. Could be in a, this could be a, a temperature sensor in a washing machine. Okay, once the water's at the right temperature, the message goes through, switches on the motor and starts washing the clothes. All right, that's it, it's our read relay. It's a way of having a small circuit powering up a big one while controlling the big one. And look, here it is, guys. Here's our circuit here. And um, can we have a butcher's at this? Yeah, so in down in here, there's lots of diodes. These are capacitors. There's a resistor, okay? And our read relays are in here. These are our relays, okay? So we've got diodes, resistor, resistor. That looks like um, a transistor, I might be wrong. Certainly looks like a transistor to me, guys. There's our capacitors and here's our read relays. So you can see how big they are, okay? It's all nice and compact. Good stuff. Right, that is it, guys. Have we covered everything? Well, you might have to watch this twice just to, to get it into your brain because it is pretty tricky, okay? So what have we done? We've looked at potentiometers. We've seen how they work. We started off with the rheostat. We've got our head around that. Where they are used, are they used to control bigger circuits so we can get a main circuit being controlled by a little piece of electronics, okay? Which is really good. Uh, and we can use an LDR, light dependent resistor or a thermistor, that type of thing to control it. That little bit of circuitry with the gates, we're gonna come back to that later. Okay, guys, lots to think about there, all right? So best of luck with that. And um, I'll see you next time. Oh, goodbye.